On each exhalation, make the side body longer, extend the back body much more, don't try to push the back body toward the front body. Keep the neck long and the throat open. Roll up onto your ball mounts. Bend the knees. Then extend the groin to re-extend the knees while you lengthen the back body and groins even more. Extend the heels, not so much toward the floor, but extend them out of the ankles. For the heels to go down, the sit bones have to go up. If you're extending your heels toward the floor, but compressing your groins to do it, in the words of my beloved teacher, you have gone wrong. <laughs> Uh, and bend the knees, sit back on the heels for a few breaths. Shirsasana. Uh, some form of headstand. If you're not doing shirsasana, take some other forward bend with head support. Use whatever wall prop or wall or pelvic swing you need to do. No matter how much weight is actually on the head, and it's different for everybody. Some people ground, have more weight on the arms than the head. <clears throat> you should not have a sense of pushing the skull into the floor. Weight bearing is fine, but don't push the skull into the floor. Sometimes there's a lot of weight on the head. Other times the forearms have to take it, so the neck feels free and light. The neck feels free and light in this pose. So you adjust the ground, the base, and the forearm and head to do that. Extend the legs. Do the, do the floyd. <laughs> Extend the inner arch through the ball mount. So it's actually adding on to the extension of the leg as if the heels are moving up out of the kidneys and the middle buttock is ascending. So don't just tighten your glutes. That might actually pull the sacrum down. Extend the middle buttock in such a way that the sacrum, act, the bone itself actually has a sense of ascending. That's an energetic pranic movement. <clears throat> Those of you who can stay in the pose, take Baddha Konasana. Again, keep the middle buttock of groin, keep the middle buttock sacrum moving up. Adjust the weight on the head and forearms so the neck is light. 
and then either go to Upavista or re-extend the legs up, whatever you can do. Again, check the neck, check the pelvis, check the puppy. <laughs> okay, back to headstand. That's hysterical. Okay, come out of the boat. I'm laughing because Daddy's puppy just walked up and right in her face there. So cute. Her tail's wagging like crazy. <laughs> Oh, it made my day. Yeah, okay, come out of the boat. <laughs> I got mooned by your dog, Pat. Okay. So I bet you didn't even know you had a middle butt on. But you do. <laughs> so it's not just enough to squeeze your tuchus, you know? So... The middle buttock is actually from the pelvic rim straight down to the sit bone, right? If you just tighten your gluteus medius, you grip the coccyx. So now that we have defined our middle buttock, <laughs> nothing to do with the middle ages. Most of us are well past middle age anyway, <laughs> except for Betsy. <laughs> well, I don't know. Okay. Happiness comes, you know. That's what Kalyani does, my cat. When I'm in headstand, she comes up and makes itches. My, and then I got to sneeze. I don't recommend sneezing in headstand, however. Come down if you have to sneeze. It's not a good idea. Right. It's nothing to sneeze at. Right. Sutta Paryankasan. All right. This is where you lie back over the happy blocks with your legs either in Virasana or Dandasana. Hey, this is a heart opening pose. Ah. My heart is happy. <clears throat> so either Dandasana or Virasana. If the butt lifts up, though, in Virasana, put a little something there. And center between the shoulder blades, very accurately on the supporting block. William. Just wait a bit. Yeah. Where is the first block exquisitely placed? <laughs> the first block should be high up in the thoracic spine, just below C7, right at the top level of the shoulder blades. Okay. So, okay. so not on the shoulder. Yeah, not, not below. Band, just the up there by T1 and T2, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay. Ground the femurs. You can also take a lower setting on the block if you can't lie back at the vertical setting. Now be careful, the back, you're bearing weight on the block, obviously, the block is supporting. But take care not to push down from the sternum toward the block, extend in front of the thoracic spine and the inner sternum. And the back ribs should actually have a sense of widening as you lengthen the thoracic the sternum and connect the thoracic spine through the neck to the base of the skull. And so don't, don't cut off the flow of extension at the neck. Then bring the arms over the head, strong extension of the arms, and bend the elbows, bring the palms to the head support block. Or clasp your elbows if you want. If the elbows rolled out, roll the, roll the outer arm to the chest up. That's where the elbows come in. And again, extend the thoracic spine and sternum rather than pushing down into the chest, uh, the support block. It's almost as if the chest was inflating up and off the support block. Okay. 
Walk the hands further down and deeper under the head as you receive the pose, if that's available to you. And then if you can, take the head support block to the next lowest setting. If you can't, that's okay. Go in a little more now. Now, Betsy, the back bend, T1 and T2. Mm -hmm. Dome over the support block. And then some of you can take the head support block completely away and clasp your elbows, but only if you have a very strong neck and dome. Otherwise, just keep the support. You shouldn't strain your neck to do this. Okay, if you did the clasped elbows, after about 30 seconds, switch the interlock of the arms. Again, dome over the support block. Ah. All right, bring the arms up and over. Now, some of you might, those of you who don't normally need back support in Supta Virasana, you can go from this pose right into Supta Virasana. Now, that's not going to work for a lot of you. You're going to need to come up, come out of the pose, get your back support, and then go back to Supta Virasana. Yeah, so try going right back into it, Betsy. There you go. Yeah. Take, what, take whatever height you need. So, Christine, that fuzzy background is really nice, but you keep disappearing. You, you have become a ghost. <laughs> like, oh, well, maybe that was your plan all along, so I couldn't <laughs> tell what you were up to. Okay. So, you know where your kidneys are, everybody? Your kidneys, your adrenals, lower back ribs. Release that grip. If you're gripping the kidneys, release your kidneys. Iyengar said once, keep the kidneys plump. <laughs> oh, there you are, Christine. Oh, now you're disappearing again. Some sort of yogic city you have. <laughs> Soften the belly, release the abdominal pelvic organs as usual to rest deep in the back body when you're in Supta So the symmetry that, of alignment in Iyengar Yoga is not just for, you know, kinesiological efficiency, if you will. Yes, we want to use the muscles to align the bones and the spine very accurately. It's a safe way to practice. But the alignment symmetry is in service to the symmetry of your breathing. So you adjust the asana to accommodate a symmetrical breath, rhythmic inhale, rhythmic exhale. Don't try to open the pose with the breath. The breath should, the pose has to open anatomically to receive the breath to allow the breath to be rhythmic and symmetrical. So as we stay in these longer poses, often your structural imbalance, the subtleness of the imbalance becomes more obvious, more evident. I sometimes find I'm tilting to one side after I've been in it a few couple of minutes. So stay connected. So even though you want to work at the level of the breath, that you don't ever really lose sight of the, the basic anatomical symmetry. <clears throat> So 
So working on the subtler energy body does not mean you leave the gross body behind. Maybe eventually, but <laughs> that takes a few thousand years of practice. And then gradually sit up, sit up out of the pose. <clears throat> and extend your legs. So actually, I think our poses for heart conditions always includes these kinds of doming chest opener poses. In Pune, they would put people over the stage for 20 minutes at a time, people with heart conditions. I mean, they prop them up so there's no strain because you want to keep this space very supple and mobile. Whether you have a heart condition or not, it's very good as we get older because otherwise the intercostals contract and then you die a miserable, bitter old woman. <laughs> There's no men in this class today, except me. <laughs> Maybe I'm overstating it. All right. <laughs> I, I think I'm getting a little goofy here today. It was that dog, it was that dog of yours, Pat, cracked me up. <laughs> All right, let's, let's open the heart a little more. Or, like Malta there, you can, you know something about pets? They really know how to let go. <laughs> they can, <laughs> total relaxation. And yet you think they're not aware, right? Just when I think my cat is totally asleep, she's got that eye kind of a little open, right? They're ready to pounce. All right, deeper into Dandasana in the chair. Unless you want to hold the freestanding pose, Betsy, for five minutes. Ah, those days are gone. Nah. Three pot of Viparita back bend over the chair, Martha. That's why you bought that chair, remember? <laughs> That was a worthwhile investment. Mm -hmm. Just think of the return you're getting on the yoga prop investment. Or cross bolsters, right, Joy? Yeah. Oops, a little too much set to bond in there, my dear. Ah, there we go. Lovely. Okay. Ah, Okay, same question. Um, Where does the, the chair hit? Yeah, and I, I am, I am assuming that you can, that I could be at a different spot on it when, depending upon what I want to open. Exactly. Okay. Um, usually, usually, generically, we say bottom tip of the shoulder blade at the edge of the chair, mm -hmm. but you could also have the center of the shoulder blade at the edge of the chair to bring the chair back bend much more up into T1 and T2. Okay, yeah. And then, so, then you can work your way down. So you have the middle shoulder blade at the edge of the chair. Yeah. Or the tip of the shoulder blade. And then you can just play with various positions in, in order to adjust the opening of the thoracic spine. Yeah. So, Again, similar to lying over the block. 
take care, don't that you're not pressing the chest or the sternum toward the supporting chair. Lengthen the thoracic spine out of the tuck, out of the lumbar, and dome the front body to create space for the spine. Now, there's obviously, you're technically in a back bend, you're hyperextending the spine, right? You're going past the neutral line. So there is going to be an opening of the anterior vertebra and a compression, a slight compression of the posterior vertebra. But that compression should never feel like a jamming sensation. Mm -hmm. All right? No jamming mod. <laughs> so again, there's a, there's a little more efforting in this posture, a little more just basic work, but keep bringing it back to the level of serving the symmetry of your breath. Working strongly should never be working aggressively so it disturbs the breath rhythm. And then, of course, Betsy, I always invite people who can to slide off to the lower ribs waist and bring the head to the floor. If you have that range, or you can just stay where you are with head support or without, it's fine. And bringing the arms to head balance position, either behind the head or palms on the floor, elbows out initially, elbows in, re -grab. Now, everybody has different body proportions, so if you need to lift the heels, fine. Just bring the shins in and roll to the ball down, big toe. If you can keep your feet grounded due to your range of motion in the structural body, fine. Now, compact, compact the outer hips, so the outer hips are rolling up and in. That way. Then... Maybe some people, when the arms come over, the, the elbows may not touch the floor, but press the wrists and sharpen the lift in the shoulder blades and side ribs. So again, you're not sinking into your back body that way. And then bring the arms up and breathe, get your breath to assist you out of the pose as you go up. Uh, and release and relax. Twist right, twist left. Not, not bad for a bunch of old women. I mean mature <laughs> women. <laughs> Untuck the chin a little, Patty. <laughs> how many how many women your age on your block can bend over a chair like that? Zero. One, that would be you, right, Patty? Right. <laughs> so, it's nice to be able to keep this going. Even though it's gradually going to fall apart, keep it while you can, right? Hey, everybody. I invite you to do shoulder stand. You can accept my invitation. Or you can say, sorry, I cannot accept. I have other things to do. <laughs> Such a good thing to be able to keep doing whatever inversions you can, right? Balance poses, inversions. Doesn't have to be a lot of fancy schmancy poses. Mm
Those of you who are in the freestanding pose, move that middle buttock up as the groins go back and up. Engage the deep inner back muscles to lift off the chest internally. If you're on the chair, maximize your center bandha in the dome of the chest. And then take halasana. If you're in the chair, try baddha konasana with the feet on the back of the chair. Some of you can do halasana from the chair. Not everybody's capable of that, but you can do it. release and slide off the chair or roll out of Sit in Upa Vista on Asana. Upa Vista on So, if you look at my feet, you can see what a floint is. <laughs> so, this is dorsiflex, right? Extend through the calf, pull the toes back. And there's a nice little point. Oh, my calf cramped. Aye, aye, aye. So, halfway in between dorsiflexion and pointing is wide feet or happy feet. We all know that. Aye. Extending up from the center arch and then out through the ball mount. Almost like you're stepping on the gas, like that. Now, do full dorsiflexion. Now, extend center arch to ball mount. Does the femur go down? In my experience, the thigh drops down. Go back to dorsiflex. Then Floyd. <laughs> Even if it's the placebo effect, who cares? It's the same effect, right? <clears throat> so you can feel yourself, the aptly named sitting bones, right? You're sitting on them. A 
because you ground the root of the femur 